Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about a modification that is made to the P80 cars, Volvos, turbo cars from uh, 94 through 98. These cars came with an oil cooler line system that has a thermostat right below the crank. And that thermostat has two oil lines that go up to the radiator. I went to go get a gasket for that oil thermostat for those oil cooler lines. And one of my mechanics over in uh, Cincinnati told me, why am I doing that? I should delete those lines, throw them in the trash. Well, that's basically an $800 repair if you have to replace the lines because the lines are 180 bucks a piece and then you got to pay somebody four or $500 to replace them. It's a lot of work. So I took that information with a grain of salt. However, I contacted my mechanic down in Orlando, Florida, told him what this crazy guy said. He confirmed it. Now this a mechanic I have in Orlando, he actually does performance mods on his car. And I'm thinking if he's deleting these oil cooler lines and doing performance mods, there may be something to check into that. I'll be a believer. So I decided to run a test with the oil and do a oil sample and a temperature reading with the oil cooler lines connected and then remove those lines and the thermostat, block it off with a in-engine, non-turbo block-off plate that comes on the cars that don't have turbo, and then run that same test again. Same kind of oil, same kind of driving conditions, or worse, and do the oil sample and temperature testing with the system blocked off. Well, my test results reveal that there's really no harder conditions with that oil cooling system deleted. The oil cooler system, I think Volvo realized it was not effective, so they changed the type of oil cooler system for the turbo cars in 1999. So those 99 cars and newer have a oil cooler system that goes into the oil pan. The other one came off the side of the block and went up to the radiator. This newer style has coolant lines that run into the oil pan to try to keep the oil cool. At any rate, I run full synthetic oil. The information that I have indicates that full synthetic oil does not start breaking down until about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I learned through running my engine with and without the oil cooler lines, the oil temperature normally rides somewhere around 200 degrees. On hot days, close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit out, my temperature may run 210, 220 when I'm working it hard. But with the oil cooler lines connected, it ran about five or 10 degrees cooler. Not enough to matter. So. I decided to leave the oil lines off of my car and drive it like that since it doesn't seem like the oil cooler lines were efficient enough to make a difference. Here are some lab results before and after the oil cooler lines have been removed and there's a link in the comments below to show you how to delete those oil cooler lines and block that thing off. You can get the part number from the comment section for the block off plate and, ga and gasket. And next time you are faced with the challenge of replacing those leaky oil cooler lines or oil thermostat, just take all that stuff off and throw it in the trash. Here's the first oil sample report that I did on my car with the oil cooler lines installed. I did it on my 95850 T5R wagon. The report date there, 7-21-2020. The type of oil I used was Mobile One Full Synthetic. I actually had three quarts 
of 10W40 and two quarts of 10W30. The reason I mixed the weights is when I did the oil change, I didn't have enough 10W40 to fill the car up, so I did the last two quarts of 10W30. I drove the car 6,296 miles when I did the oil change. I captured some of the oil, bottled it up, did the oil change with the same amount of 10W40, 10W30 mix. As you come further down in the report, you could see the comments that they sent me from Blackstone Labs. I made a comment to them when I sent the sample in that I was going to remove my oil cooler lines so they made some comments there and referred to that. When you submit oil samples in to Blackstone Lab on the same vehicle, they just add the reports as you go along. So you see here on the far right, universal averages. Universal averages mean when they get these kind of samples from people with the same kind of cars, these are the results they normally get. Then the first oil sample that I sent them on Panther, I had put 6,018 miles on the vehicle. The vehicle had 225,000 miles. I did that in 2013. It shows how many quarts of oil I added and it shows the results going all the way down. Now fast forward far left this 6,296 miles is what this current sample had with the oil cooler lines attached. That's the mileage that was on the car and the results are straight down. Shows things in the oil. Shows the chemicals still remaining in the oil like the oil uh, treatment package and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to the comparison results after I remove the oil cooler lines. This is the next sample. Same vehicle. I submitted them the same date. What no real reason to change the date of submission. The oil changes were done about 40 days apart. So I put 7,313 miles on the oil in 40 days. I used the same oil mix. I used 3 quarts 10W40, 3 quarts 1030. I also towed cars on both oil samples. On the first sample, I towed Red Baron from Albuquerque to Ohio. The second oil sample, I towed cars from uh, St. Louis to Cincinnati, from uh, Cincinnati to Kalamazoo, from Chicago to Cincinnati. So I did a lot of towing on this oil as well. Now you see here in the comments, they initially sent me a test result back without any comparison with the oil lines removed versus them installed. So I asked them to make an amendment to the lab result comments so that it would clearly uh, be visible and state the differences in the oil samples, whether they were good or bad. So that's what they did here. Now, as you also see that they said the TBN was 2.5 and they recommended me to go more miles. Well, heck, I've driven this car, as you can see in, in the uh, middle results in the bottom, as much as 12,000 miles on an oil. But the car is no longer using oil. I'm not having to add any in between oil changes because I rebuilt the cylinder head. Besides that, you see here below the results of the oil with the oil lines connected with the oil lines disconnected and removed. Here are the comparison on the lab results. Far right is the universal averages for this type of engine. Far left is the very last oil change. So the blue highlighted ones is the oil change 
with the lines removed. As you can see, I drove over a thousand more miles with the lines removed. I had less aluminum in the oil, less coronium, less copper. You know, you could just pause here and look at the results going all the way down the screen. In this lower part of the report, you see a couple more numbers. What I like to point out to people in particular is the TBN. The TBN tells you if the oil still has the additives needed to properly clean and lubricate the moving parts in the engine. And as you can see, the TBN, even though I put almost 7,500 miles on the oil, is 2.5. The time that I ran the car 12,000 miles, my TBN was 1.9. So it is really likely that I can drive 15,000 miles on my Mobile One oil and still have the oil in good enough condition to clean and lubricate the inside of the engine. No problem at all. That's just a little side note. So those are the samples. Yeah, you could do what you want. I think you're fine deleting those oil cooler lines. Now, if for some reason you're a purist, you wanna leave it like they initially designed it, go right ahead. That five degrees might help you sleep better. I have a brand new set of those oil lines that you could purchase from me. I'd be glad to take your money for those things. I was going to throw them in the trash, but I said, hey, some purists might want them. I can sell them to you half price of which you could buy them from anywhere. Contact me. I'll ship those things off to you. I'll put a link in the comments so you can go straight to PayPal, order those things. Once somebody buys them, I'll remove the link. So if you don't see a link, some purists have purchased those lines from me. Congratulations. So far with my oil cooler lines deleted, the absolute highest oil temperature that I've seen was about 260 degrees. My coolant temperature was 255. I was towing a car up a very steep mountain. I mean, I'm going a mile or two up this steep mountain towing a car with my car it got hot little scary with that coolant getting that hot but i made it up there over there didn't overheat the engine didn't blow the head and i'm still running with that oil in my system not really worried about it so that's the highest my oil temp has gotten 260 they say it starts breaking down at 450 full synthetic oil so that's where i'm at if you got any questions post them below if you got any comments post them below if you watch the video, just make a comment that you did or did not watch it. You appreciate the information, whatever. Thanks very much for watching. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.